Look at those, y'all. That is some bait right there. We have plenty of filler crabs. Plenty of live shrimp in our live well. And y'all, this is Steve with Bama Saltwater. I'm glad that you can join me. I like to make these intros short, sweet, to the point. We're gonna try to catch us dinner today. As always though, I like to show you the setup I'm using. At the bottom of my 20 pound fluorocarbon leader is a one ounce bank sinker and a loop. And I come up about a foot and do a Palomar knot to a size one mustad live bait hook. And then I come up about another foot to a black barrel swivel. But y'all, this is a Daiwa BGMQ 3000 size reel with 20 pound braid and a seven foot St. Croix Avid inshore. This is a medium power, fast action rod. Y'all, let's get a live bait out. I think I'm gonna start with the crab. Mom's already fishing over there, so see what she gets. I have a live filler crab. You can find these along the bank where there's any type of rocks or drift wood and you can also purchase them at local tackle shops when they have them in stock and go up underneath it and then come out the top shell without cracking it too bad there's a hooked up fill of crab ready to go down you all gonna toss this crab out along that seawall let it sink down to the bottom and I just reel in my slack and hold it there we're already getting a bite I mean instant oh there's a fish. That didn't take long. <laughs> that didn't take long at all. Ooh, good polar. That's why you want strong, smooth drags. I have not seen it yet. Mm, be a sheepy. Oh yeah, it's a sheep's head. It's easier to just guide the fish towards the net. There we go. Got him. He's heavy. Yeah, that's a good one right there. Thank you. you jump out. That is awesome. Catch a lot of these. One of my favorite eating fish. There is a barge and a towboat passing by. So if you hear that loud noise, that's what that is. But these are great eating. They only have to be 12 inches from the tip of their nose to the middle of their tail. It's fork length, very abundant, great eating hard fighters. You're allowed 10 a person. So here in the state of Alabama, but I do want to show you something real quick. And it's their crazy looking teeth. They have teeth like a like a human or sheep aren't those teeth just some crazy looking things look at that but we're gonna throw him on ice and try to get another one that was one crab one fish see if we can do it again there's another nice fiddler crab on there usually where you find one you'll find more they school up pretty thick Oh, oh, there was one. I still have it. Yep. There it is. You probably don't need a net for this one. That's a red. It's a red fish. They have to be 16 inches in Alabama. He might keep. But I want to look at the spots on him when he gets still. I didn't hit the record, but uh, that was a beautiful redfish. It was just under 16 inches and he had 11 spots. So he had to go back. <laughs> I should have looked and seen the red light. But anyway, I'm gonna get another fiddler crab out. That's what he ate. And that's also what the sheep's head ate and keep on fishing. Let's get after it. That was a pretty little redfish. There we go. All right, I'll just move down a little bit further and gonna keep on fishing. Getting a lot of pinfish bites at the other one. It's still kind of early in the season at the time of filming this video. So the pinfish are still hanging around. Oh, got one on the, <laughs> a little puppy drum. <laughs> Cute little thing. Y'all check this out. This is a little puppy black drum. So you can see the difference between the sheep's head primarily is their mouth. See, he doesn't really have any teeth. What he does is uses these lips and rough sandpaper mouth scrape up crabs, shrimp, and barnacles, and then they have crushers in the back of their throat. If you ever catch one, you can feel right here, and they crush all those shells and crabs. These are good eating too. No size limits on these. He's a small one and gets to go back today. Pretty little thing though. Crazy how they can get like 40 pounds. Here you go, bud. Oh, you have one? Heck yeah. Mom's hooked up. Heck yeah. He's all the way under the boat, ain't he? Oh, he's fighting me. Oh, there he is. Pretty. Pretty fish. Pretty fish. Hey. There you go. Y'all, Mom just got a nice sheep's head as well. Check that out. 
So now we're one and one. Good job on that one. So I just want to show you all up close, see if they'll focus again. Look at the teeth on them things. <laughs> Crazy looking teeth on them. So I think they're beautiful fish and they taste good too. They're like big saltwater bluegill. Great job. Thank I'm, you. I'm gonna throw them in the cooler for you. Y'all, and there's a few different sheepshead species across the globe and across the country. There's some others like the Pacific sheep's head or sheep head. And then I believe there's some up north in the Great Lakes. All right, I'm gonna try to catch me another one. Oh, you got one? Yes. <laughs> Let me get the net. Oh, that's a trout looks like, or red. That's a pretty red. There you go, whip it in, whip it in. Pretty little red, about the same size as mine. That's a pretty red fish. Good job. <laughs> Thank <it> you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the blue in their tail is awesome. You are so pretty. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, so mom got that pretty red fish. You got something? Yeah. <laughs> are you gonna be able to bring it in? That's a pretty fish. What is that? That is another red. Oh, look at the spots on that one. Wow. You might have me beat with spots, Neil. Y'all check out that red fish. How many spots do you say? 19. 19 spots on there. <laughs> wow, look at that. That is so cool. You wanna let, beautiful. Let them go and get big. There you go, baby. All right, maybe it can become a bull red and <laughs> with some really cool spots one day. Oh, got one. Right where that water's flowing out. Yo, we are hooked up with fish. I need to get on this side. Where are you gonna be? A red. Man, these have a lot of big spots on them. Or not big, but multiple spots on them. Those are gorgeous. I mean, look at that. How many are on him? Not the biggest redfish ever, but I'll say he is pretty. So get that hook out. So I like these live bait hooks. You rarely gut hook these fish. You can set the hook good. They keep them pinned, but they're also real easy to take out for catch and release. So there you go. Y'all, so I put on another filler crab. I'm glad that we have dinner. We have those two sheep said, we're gonna keep on fishing and see what else we hook into. But I'm glad that we actually have something to take home and cook. There we go. Okay. You have one? Yeah, yeah see? Something. Told you. Sheep's head, probably. Oh. Yep, good fish. Uh oh, you threw where I had lost one okay. and hooked Can up. I do. It's a nice one. You know, ma'am, not yet. You need to control your fish. <laughs> it's pretty deep. Oh, got him. Pretty. Yes, that's the one I missed. <laughs> that's a good one. So, mom added another sheep's head to the cooler. That's awesome. All right, y'all, we had a pretty good afternoon out here. We're gonna call it a trip and then head in. I'll show you how I clean those fish and get ready to cook them. So we'll see you back at the cleaning table. Hey everyone, we're back at the cleaning table. And as you can see, we have three beautiful sheep's head on the table ready to be clean. And I came home from this fishing trip to an awesome package on my doorstep. I got in some new sword knives. This is the seven inch flex fillet I'm gonna use first. These will be linked down below. They're extremely sharp. I've been using them a couple years now and I thoroughly enjoy cleaning fish with them. So we're gonna start cleaning these sheep's head. Just want to show you again, see if the camera will focus on their teeth. Ain't that some crazy stuff, huh? But they will sit there like this with their big swim bladder and these large pectoral fins and stay suspended horizontally using those big old scraping teeth to eat all those barnacles off. It's pretty cool that there is a fish out there that kind of helps clean up. There's always, there's a purpose for everything. I think it's neat. But I'm gonna do the rest of these fish and we'll have plenty of meat. But I like taking a sharp knife and getting under. Wow, that is, that is extremely sharp. And getting under those scales just like that towards the head. It's just the same thing with anything else, but look how white and delectable that meat is. It's very good. It's, it's a sweet meat from all the crabs and crustaceans they eat. They eat a lot of barnacles and oysters. They go behind. 
like to make a shallow cut all the way down to the tail. Sometimes you have to take those scales off the tip of your knife. It's hard to cut through scales. And then fillet it off the carcass, off their bones. They have some thick bones. It's pretty easy to not cut through the other side. And I kind of pull the fillet up and away and be very careful not to cut yourself. But run that knife down. While there's some tension on that fillet. So once you get to the middle, go up and over. And if you want to, you can switch around. Whoo, there's a cold, they've been sitting in ice. I'll start on the tail. There you go. Meet our first cut. Filleted. Same thing, meet in the middle. And I'll flip it around and cut off the tail. And this is where their big old rib cage is. That's pretty difficult to cut through and there's not a lot of meat sitting on their rib cage. So I'll take this filet and go over the rib cage. See that? See their big old ribs? Just fillet around it, down, and now we have a sheep's head fillet. What we want to do is separate that skin and that fillet. If you're grilling it, you can leave the skin on and make like sheep's head on the half shell. But there's our sheep's head fillet. See? Not much wasted meat. Hey everyone, we're in the kitchen. It's time to cook up our sheep's head. We're gonna be shallow frying it and then serving it with a side of homemade cocktail sauce. So I just have a beaten egg, two eggs here. Have my oil warming up to 375 degrees. Have my homemade batter. If you like your own batter, this is flour mixed with a bunch of stuff. We'll show that a little bit later. Our oil's getting warm. So we're gonna take our fish and I've cut it into thin, nice little perfect frying pieces. So your egg wash, flour, shake it off, put it in. There we go, check that out. But this is our first batch of sheep's head and it doesn't take long to fry up and cook. You know, a couple minutes on one side, flip it, a couple minutes on the other, and it's ready to go. While our sheep's head's frying, let me show you what I've been using for my flour mix. So what I mix in my batter is white lily flour. I use regular paprika, garlic powder, thyme, oregano, black pepper, and salt. And then I have some parsley flakes for presentation once we're done. But it's pretty much time to flip. It's just a couple minutes on each side. It doesn't take long, look at that. You want nice, golden, and crispy. Oh man, these are gonna be so good. Cook time, probably three to five minutes on the shallow frying. Like I said, have you a plate for these to drain the oil. Smells amazing. Look how they're nice, golden, and crispy on both sides. That paprika really gives that white lily flower some nice color when you fry it mixed together with it. Oh, our fish is done cooking. It's time to make our homemade cocktail sauce. You can buy ready-made cocktail sauce, but why not make it homemade? It's very easy to do. Get our ketchup, and we're making a good amount since we have a whole plate of fish. And none of this is exact measurements, it's all to taste. But ketchup and horseradish are your two main ingredients. Get a nice spoonful of horseradish. The more you put in there, the more tangy and it's gonna burn your nose. If you don't like it as tangy, you know, you don't have to do a giant spoonful. But there's our horseradish, our Worcestershire sauce. And like I said, there's no major measurements in this. It's all to taste. And we have some Louisiana because it's a little bit saltier than other hot sauces. So you don't have to add any salt. Now, if you want to, you can squeeze a lemon in it as well. But we're gonna mix this up. Homemade cocktail sauce. Whew, you can smell that stuff from a mile away. The horseradish is strong, but everything else helps dilute it with that ketchup. Heck yeah, y'all, look at that plate of food right there. It got pretty dark outside. I wanted to go eat this out by the water on the picnic table. 
So as always, I like to take you from the water to the cleaning table, and now we are in my kitchen together, about to enjoy this delicious plate of food. Let's chomp down on a nice, crispy piece of white, flaky sheep's head. And we call it here in beautiful Alabama Gulf Coast. Let's give it a try. Mm. It's kind of hard not to like fried fish, but some just have better taste than others. Southern style sheep said, dang, is that good. Mm. If you enjoyed this video, go hit the subscribe button down below. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. As always, I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. And we'll see you later.